Okay, so here we have the Dangerous Things Numbing Gel Kit. It is a lidocaine gel kit that comes with the lidocaine gel in a kind of foil single-use pouch. It has a chlorhexidine wipe for skin prep and a bandage to kind of help uh, protect uh, things <laughs> like clothing and other, other items from getting gel goop on it while you're waiting the one to two hours for full effectiveness. So pull these things out. Side. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, you know, identify the area of skin that you're going to be working on. So incisions, separations, things like that. So let's assume we're going to put something here. Um, you're going to want to treat it with the chlorhexidine wipe first because the gel is self-occluding. It's got a stabilizer that sets up pretty well, and you want to make sure that there's nothing uh, on the first, you know, layer of dermis and a couple layers. You just want to clean it as much as possible with the chlorhexidine wipe. And that's, you know, get be real liberal with it. Um, you know, it can't, can't be too clean, basically. Um, and this is, you know, for later when you when you actually want to wipe off the lidocaine gel when it's when it's done its job, you know, you're going to, before the procedure, you're going to go ahead and re, you know, apply antiseptic. But uh, it's best to do it before you do the gel just to make sure everything's as clean as possible and the gel doesn't kind of obscure any kind of germs or anything you don't want to have getting inside you. So that takes about uh, 60 seconds to a couple minutes to take full effectiveness and also to uh, dry, evaporate. The alcohol itself will evaporate off. So we'll, we'll be back in a second. Okay, we can see that it's pretty much dry and it's uh, been cleaned well. So there's uh, kind of two ways to go about this. Uh, you can see the lidocaine gels in this foil um, container, this kind of sachet. So I'm going to you know, kind of work it down. But there are some tear tabs there. Uh, I don't like using them because if you open this whole thing, it gets a little bit messy. And in particular, it's hard to use uh, one-handed like I'm trying to do here. So I'm going to use these scissors and just cut the corner open. So the other thing about this is that this material, this gel, has no... Um, it's stabilizer and lidocaine and tetracaine. So there's no preservative in here. So you really need to consider this a single use, even though there's plenty of gel you're gonna to want to use as much as you need to and then throw it away. Uh, because if you try to save it, uh, you know, it could have bacterial growth and other things you really don't want in your uh, skin application gels. So um, the two ways you can go about using it are essentially, you know, we include this, this bandage. Um, you can use it with the bandage or without. The reason for the bandage is uh, to protect your stuff from getting goop on it. Uh, it doesn't need the bandage for occlusion. The gel does that on its own. So um, if you want to use the bandage that's included, what you have is a working area that is the size of the gauze. Because what we're gonna do is apply the gel to the gauze, then apply the bandage to the skin. So um, if you need a working area that's larger than this, then you need to find some alternative way to protect um, your skin and the goop on your skin from getting on other things like your clothes. And that can be something simple like just some saran wrap or um, even kind of just gauze, um, that, that all works fine. It's just, we're going to use the approach here of uh, applying it to the bandage and that's, uh, consider that to be our working area. So again, the working area is uh, essentially anything that is the, uh, the area where you're going to make an incision or do some dermal elevation. So I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this out. And it's important on this to uh, try to be sure to not get it on the adhesive part of the bandage because that kind of makes it not work. Um, but you're going to want a nice thick layer as much as possible. And try not to get, yeah, I've already stuck the bandage to my finger. So um, get it as even as possible and all the way to the edges and corners. Um, but yeah, you want it to be nice and thick. Nice thick layer. I'm gonna use my channel, my inner Bob Ross here. So that's pretty good coverage and nice and thick pretty much all over everywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this to my advantage. And we're just gonna assume that this is the area that we're working on. So I'm gonna lay this down right on top of there. You can see that. And it's not really even, so let's even it out. So 
So I'll stick that adhesive down as good as I can. Keep the gel inside as much as possible and press that down without squishing it out the sides. You know, you really don't want to squish it out, but um, get make sure it makes good contact with the skin, nice and even. So we're going to leave that for uh, just about an hour. That should be about 90% effectiveness. And that's enough that you're not, you know, this is enough protection. You're not going to get stuff over your clothes or your shirt or whatever. But um, yeah, for full effectiveness, you're going to want two hours, but we're, we're just going to try it at one. I'll be back in an hour. Okay, it's been a little over an hour, and we're going to go ahead and pull this back. You can see some of the gels coming through the gauze, um, which is normal. But we're going to go ahead and take this off. Ooh, <laughs> the hair has definitely not been numbed, that's for sure. But that's not anything to be concerned about because the gel wasn't there. But, oh, yeah. That... Okay. Um, so basically, you can see the gel part there. And just kind of giving a test. Yeah, that's pretty numb. So I'm just going to use a regular paper towel and clear the gel as much as I can. You really want to use either paper towel or um, if you have it like a non-linting um, kind of a towelette that they make for certain applications. But um, so you can kind of see the the actually the outline of where the adhesive was, and then. The, uh, the gelled area, and it dev, does definitely feel uh, numb. So I, what I have here is a sterile scalpel, and normally I would be, you know, applying another chlorhexidine wipe there uh, and doing the procedure, but since I'm just kind of doing a poke test, I'm not going to bother with that part. Okay, so we're going to get this open here, and this is uh, kind of a strange shaped scalpel, and which is why I'm using it. It's not really common to use. Um, but uh, it, it does a good poke, right? So I can I can poke up here and definitely feel that. Um, even within the band uh, where the adhesive was, I definitely feel it. Here, I do not feel it. Um, I don't feel it at all. So actually, just see if we can make a... Ooh, yeah. That's... I can feel it cutting, uh, but only from, you know, from this finger. I can feel it dragging on the skin. But uh, But the area in this area is totally numb. Um, so, I mean, I could get through the dermal layer and uh, probably do a lot of work in there without really feeling it. I don't feel like doing that for no reason, though, so I uh, try to avoid scars whenever necessary. But I can tell you that this is uh, the entire area where it was, uh, the gel was uh, on the gauze is numb. So maybe approaching, no, okay, that's still numb. But um, I'm just looking at where the gauze was. You can see a very clear delineation. That's numb. That is not right there. That's numb. That is not. And that's where the adhesive was. So um, the bandage approach works pretty well. And again, if you need a larger area, you can just apply the gel directly to the skin and then put gauze or another occlusion technique to really just to keep the, uh, the goop from getting on other things during that hour to two hour wait while you uh, wait for it to take full effectiveness. The site might be called Dangerous Things, but remember, safety first.